What's up, Pinedale kids? I am so thankful that you are watching Church at Home today. Today is a unique day for us. We are having our very first ever combined family service in Big Church. Now you might be asking, well, what does that mean? Well, let me tell you. It means that the children's and student ministry have combined forces to plan out a really cool service for the families and for the entire church. We're taking over. That service is taking place at 9 o'clock and 11 o'clock in Big Church. And if it's not too late, you can attend it. Simply hit pause on this video, besides you can watch it later, ask your parents if you and your whole family can go to Pinedale at either 9 o'clock or 11 o'clock. Now, if your family isn't quite ready to be in a crowd for church, that's okay. You can still watch this video right here. We call it Church at Home. Or, 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 you can also watch the family service we are doing in Big Church. We'll be streaming it live at 11 o'clock. Let me show you how you can do that. Simply go here to pinedale.church at 11 o'clock and click on this button right here called Watch Live. If it's already past noon on Sunday, you can still watch the family service. Simply go to pinedale.church slash kids. Click on Elementary Online Lessons. Here is today's video, the one you're watching right now, and right below it is a link to the family service. Well, kinda. There is a link there, but it won't be active until Sunday afternoon once the service is over. It takes a couple hours before it syncs up. Now, I would love it if you would watch today's Church at Home video and our family service. Today's Church at Home video is going to have some of the exact same songs and elements that we're going to have in the family service. Plus, a small part of my lesson today will cover the same topic we are talking about in Big Church. But there are also several differences. I want us to continue our series called Foundations. Today we are going to take a look at the foundation of prayer. Now before we get to our worship time, I want you to do a couple of things. First, got any guesses what it might be? You gotta go get your Bible. That's always number one. Open up to James chapter 1 and also James chapter 5. We're going to take a look at two different sections of scripture there. Next, since today is kind of focused on families, go find your mom or dad or both of them and ask them to come watch Church at Home with you right now. And then later, watch our family service together as well, whether you're coming to the church and watch it, or you watch it when we're streaming at 11 o'clock or later today. Now I know it's gonna take you a bit of time to do those two things, so I'm gonna give you three minutes, and your time starts now.
me, Hannah. Yes, I'm here. Where are we right now? My house. Your house? Yeah. Hey, I'm looking here at their new deck. Did you guys get a new deck? Oh uh, yeah, we made it. We're just not going to the roof yet. Awesome. Do you know what's happening today in Big Church? Family service. That's right, a family service. Are you going to go to the family service? Or are you going to watch church at home? We're doing both. Nice, I like it. Way to go. Do you know what happens next Sunday? Yeah. What is it? Church starts back to kids. Yes! Are you excited about it? Yes. Cool. You're going to be excited to see all your friends? Yeah. Uh, me too. You know what time it is now? Time to get up on our feet and worship. Yep, so tell them. Time to get up and let's worship. Bye. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it 
it will always be it's always been you jesus 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 at the center of it all jesus at the center of it all from beginning to the end it will always be it's always been you jesus jesus nothing else matters nothing in this world will do jesus you're the center and everything revolves around you jesus you be the center of my life. Jesus, be the center of my life. From beginning to the end, it will always be. It's always been you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. guys I'm really excited about today for a couple of reasons one is that I wanted to show you this you know what's in here it's an oatmeal cookie smoothie mm, so good and you know what I put in it a frozen banana right yes a frozen banana and I did not look at this last week before I did my prayer time but I saw it today when I made the smoothie and I underlined the, can you see that? I underlined the word frozen so that I would remember to put the frozen banana in. So I had to show you that. Um, and if you watched last week's video, you know what I'm talking about. Um, so today I'm excited because our, I'm always excited about our prayer time, but I'm excited for our lesson today because it's about prayer. And you guys are already experts on prayer. So I'm just going to remind you of what you already know, and that is that prayer is simply, that's right, talking to God, and there's no such thing as a silly prayer. You guys are nailing this. 
and if it's important to you, yeah, it's important to God. And you guys know these things, and I pray that as you grow and learn and get closer to God, you're going to realize just how true each of those things are. And when you ever doubt that any of those things are true, you'll know that they're not. You'll, you'll just wipe those doubts away because you'll realize that they are true. And they will guide your prayers throughout your life. And uh, speaking of throughout your life, um, I'm excited about another opportunity we have today, and that is for our family service. Our family service is happening in the Adult Worship Center in Big Church uh, <clears throat> today, and it will be live at 11 o'clock. You can watch it live, or if it's after 12 o'clock, you can watch it you can watch it any, any time from the beginning. And I hope you guys will do that because um, we're going to have a great time and being able to show the adults how we worship. Another thing that we're going to do today, we're throwing all the stuff at you, is that we're going to start a new tradition in big church. And that is that and on the first Sunday of every month, the adults are going to stop what they're doing in their worship service and they're going to pray for the kids of our church for you guys and that's going to happen on the first Sunday of every month well today is the first Sunday of September so during our family service the adults are going to stop what they're doing and they're going to have a prayer time because they don't have a prayer time like we have a prayer time so they're going to get a taste of what we do every single week on that first Sunday of the month so today they're taking time out to pray for you guys. I want to take time out to pray for you guys. And as always, you can pray for whatever you want. But when I pray, I'm going to pray for you guys. And I want to dedicate this time to you. And as we kick off September and we, we pray for the kids of our church um, in our adult worship service. And as we continue to start, as we start meeting for kids church in person, I just want to pray for wherever you are, whether you're at home a lot, whether you've been getting out more, or where, whatever stage you're in in this and what we're going through. I just want to pray that God would speak into your life and to show you what He wants for you. All right, so I'll give you a moment to pray for whatever it is that is on your heart and whatever it is that you want to pray for, and then I'll close this out by praying for you guys. Father God, I thank you so much for today, and I thank you for the opportunity to have a family service in Big Church, and I pray for each one who gets to come and who gets to watch it, and I pray that you would move in our lives and that you would speak to us, and I pray for the kids of our church, for the kids of Pinedale. I pray that you would speak truth into each one of their hearts and minds into their lives, be with their families, be with their schools, be with them as they learn and grow more about you, and especially for today as we learn more about, about prayer, and I pray that you would encourage and lift up each one, help us to be bold in the things you want us to be bold in, help us to live our lives for you, and help us to speak the words that you have us to speak. We love you so much and pray for every request going up for each kid of all ages. And I pray that you would help us to grow closer to you. And I pray all these things in Jesus' name. And all God's kids said, Amen.
the fall of 1977, NASA was particularly busy. In a 16-day period in the fall of 1977, NASA sent Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 both up into outer space. Their mission was to take pictures of planets as they flew by. Over the past 40 years, they have done things like take some amazing pictures of some planets, but occasionally they would flip around and take a selfie picture of planet Earth. NASA has been thrilled with Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 because they have outlived what their original mission was. They continue to send information and pictures back to Earth. And they now have left our solar system and are traveling at a rapid speed into stellar space. And here's the bonus news. They must have found like some extra energy or had the Energizer Bunny batteries installed because they believe the batteries on there are going to hold a charge until about somewhere between 2025 and 2030. And they're gonna to continue to send back information. After that, they're gonna kind of sputter out and they're just gonna to continue to float on and on and on forever and ever into outer space. Now, one interesting thing most people don't know about Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 is that they took these gold-plated record albums and attached them to the very front surface of the spaceships. Here's a picture of them. You may ask, why did they do a record album? <laughs> because it was 1977 and that was a thing back then, all right? If it had been in the 80s or early 90s, they would have done a cassette tape. And if it had been the 90s or early 2000s, they would have done a gold-plated CD. If it were today, they probably would put like a gold-plated iPod. But in 1977, it was a record album. A committee spent five years designing this record and an entire year figuring out what they were going to put on this record album. And after they did, one of the things they put on there was this message of a greeting saying hello and we bring you peace. And they recorded it in 55 different English or in 25 different earthly languages. Now, isn't it amazing at the effort we are willing to put in at the possibility to communicate with extraterrestrial beings that don't even really exist. And yet so few of us are willing to put in any effort to communicate with the people who are sitting in our living rooms or across the table from us. Even worse, I dropped my Bible on the ground. Even worse, we won't even make any effort to communicate with a God that does exist. We are just one short conversation away from him. Today in our family service that you can attend at 9 or 11 or you can stream it live at 11 o'clock or you can watch it on our website later, later on Sunday afternoon, we are going to be talking about communication and how it relates to families. And you're going to hear Martin, Showers, and Dingo, they're going to teach us about three keys that will unlock the door that leads to good communication. And all three of those points that they're going to share with you are based on what we read in James chapter 1, verse 19. Let's look it up. I gotta pick, oh man, I lost, oh, I turned right to it. How cool is that? All right, let's look at James chapter 1. Verse 19, it says this. My dear brothers, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry. I really like what, what Martin, Showers, and Dingo have to say about communication. So be sure to watch that family service, okay? It really is gonna apply to both the kids and the parents. But here's what I want to focus on for Church at Home. One of the foundations we want to teach in you kids is the practice of prayer. Prayer is simply talking to God. 
Communication with God is a foundation, and we want to teach you kids to practice it on a regular basis. Not to just talk to God, but to also listen to God, to be quick to listen to Him. In Kids Church, we are constantly trying to drill home two truths when it comes to prayer. First, there's no such thing as a silly prayer. If it's important to you, it's important to God. And then second, God always hears and answers your prayer. Sometimes he says yes, and sometimes he says no, and sometimes he says, you're gonna have to wait. But rest assured, he never ignores your prayers. You already have your Bible open to James, and what I want you to do is I want you to turn just a few pages over to James chapter 5. I want you to read you this passage, and as I do, I want you to underline every time it says the word pray. All right, we're going to start in verse 13. Is any one of you in trouble? He should pray. There's the first one, pray. Is anyone happy? Let him sing songs of praise. Is any one of you sick? He should call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Verse 17. Elijah was a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed and the heavens gave rain and the earth produced its crops. Do you see what James is telling us here? Pray, 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 pray. Do you want to know how to deepen your prayer life? Simply pray. Don't prepare to pray, just pray. Don't read about prayer, just pray. Don't attend a lecture or a class or listen to a sermon on prayer or engage in a discussion about prayer. Just stop and pray. Don't be so concerned about wrapping the gift. And what I mean by that is that you want your prayers to be wrapped up nice and pretty and you say the fancy words. Don't be so concerned about wrapping the gift that you forget to give it. Listen to me. It is better to pray an awkward prayer than to not pray at all. Our prayers might be awkward, our attempts may be feeble, but since the power of prayer is not in the one who says it, but in the one who hears it, the person who hears it, it means that our prayers do make a difference. And if you ever feel you should only pray when inspired to, okay, well, that's okay. You just make sure that you are inspired every single day. Don't be concerned about the form of your prayer. God doesn't listen to the words like, like your fancy words and phrases. He listens to your motives and your heart. I want to share one last bonus thought with you regarding prayer. All right, and, and this is just, I got to share it. I want you to open up to Mark chapter 1. In Mark chapter 1, now, I'm going to say this. Jesus thought prayer was extremely important. Many times in scripture, we see Jesus going off by himself to pray. Mark 1, verse 35, is my most favorite time he does this. Let me read it to you. It says this, Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house, and went to a solitary place, that means a quiet, alone place, where he prayed. Now, for years, I've read this, and I, and I took it to mean that we should pray in the morning time. But then I looked at it a whole lot closer, and I noticed that there are seven descriptions that describe when Jesus went out to pray. Look at this. Number one, very early, 
in the morning, while it was dark, Jesus got up, left the house, went to a solid, solitary place, that means just a place where he could be alone without any distractions or anybody around, and he prayed. Do you see those seven details when Jesus prayed? If prayer was that important to Jesus, don't you think that we should be communicating with God just as much? My challenge for you is to be like Jesus. I want you to spend time every week praying to Jesus. In fact, not every week, I should correct that. Every single day, every minute, just spend as much time praying as you can. Now, I want to review those seven things. Very early, sometimes I get up really early in the morning still very dark out very early in the morning while it's still dark like this morning I got up like at 3 30 this morning did some stretching I did some walking listened to a couple of sermons but I came home and I spent time in prayer praying for you guys praying for our church and praying for what's about to happen next Sunday when we resume having children's ministry at the church. It was dark <laughs> when I went out this morning. Jesus got up. In other words, don't pray while you're laying in bed. Make an intentional effort. I'm going to get myself up. I'm going to get my heart beating. I'm going to get my blood flowing. I'm going to get my, blood, my heart pumping. I'm going to move out of my bed and I'm going to go find a place to pray left the house. Now, I'm not suggesting that you leave your house, but maybe you can leave your room. You can get away from things that distract you, and that's find a solitary place. Find a place where you can have a time to talk to God. My favorite place to just pause and pray and talk to God is actually over on the stairs over here. I go up on the landing, and I just that's just kind of my little spot that I kind of nest in. It's my challenge for you guys this week. You know what? Let's just practice it right now. When this video is over, how about you go find a solitary place, pause, and just go talk to God. We want you guys to see how important prayer is, and that is why prayer is one of the foundations of our kids' church services. That's where we're going to stop for today. Next Sunday, you guys can be in class with me for Kids Church. We're still going to have Church at Home, this video here. We will still produce it. And what's on the video will be very similar to what you're going to be getting in class. The music that Denise is picking out in Kids Church will also be some of the same songs that are here on this video here. I should have said that the other way around. Anyhow the lesson that we teach here on Church at Home will also be the same lesson that we're teaching in Kids Church. Kids Church, though, is going to have a couple more elements that aren't on the video, like small groups, and fellowship, and communion. By the way, next Sunday, that's the foundation we're going to be talking about, communion. I love you guys. Bye-bye.